So there was some huge uh, news from last night, uh, very late last night, is the last uh, night's election in the Toronto St. Paul's, uh, the by-election for Toronto St. Paul's, it didn't get finished counting until about 4.30, 4.45 in the morning. I had already gone to bed. I went to bed around 3, 3.30, and the Liberals were still up by a couple points with only a few uh, a few uh, votes left to count. So I thought, well, the Conservatives made it close. Good effort for them. Still like a 20-point swing in their favor from last election, which is great news. But they lost. And then... I wake up this morning just before I go to work and I see that Don Stewart, the conservative candidate for the Toronto St. Paul super liberal riding actually ended up winning with 42.1% of the votes to the liberals, Leslie Church's 40.5% of the votes. Now, why am I smiling? Why am I excited? It's just a by-election, Danny. Who cares, right? Well, usually, yeah, I would agree with that. Unless you see something abnormal happen. Okay, the Liberals won this election by 25 points in, I think it was 2020 or 2019. 25 points. The polling before the election showed that the the Conservatives narrowed it down to about five points, but were still, still supposed to lose. And it looked like they were going to. The Liberals were actually like around, say, 10, 30, 11 o'clock last night. We're up at about 13, uh, a 13 point lead. So it looked like, okay, nice try, but, you know, you did better than last time, but you're not flipping this super liberal writing. It just ain't going to happen. Well, it did. Now you have to wonder if you're Justin Trudeau or a supporter of Justin Trudeau somehow, what's his path to victory here? He can't even hold on to a stronghold. And by the way, there was a lot of people reporting on the streets and they were talking to these voters and they were saying, hey, listen, I actually like Leslie Church but I hate Justin Trudeau and I'm not going to vote for Leslie Church because of Justin Trudeau. He needs to go. Now, most of those people, it's not like they just went over and voted to the conservatives. They went and just stayed home, right? They basically pretended it was COVID all over again. And they just said, I'm I'm not voting conservative because I'm not conservative, but I'm not voting for this liberal idiot anymore or anyone who is working in his cabinet. They're just done with them. So what happens to these other ridings in Toronto or Mississauga that are liberal leaning, but, you know, not quite viewed as a stronghold like this, the Toronto St. Paul riding was, are they flipping conservative too? Are the conservatives going to overperform, uh, overperform in the polls in the federal election, just like they did in this by-election? It's very possible. It's very clear that Canadians are done with Justin Trudeau and this result proves it. I mean, how he hasn't already announced that he's resigning just goes to show you what an egotistical, maniacal narcissist this guy is. There's no path for victory here, and he still won't get out of the get out of the way. His ship is sinking, and he is taking he's not just going down with the ship, he's taking every crew member and every passenger on board with him. If this can if this is like a trend of you know, hey, other liberal writings are gonna go conservative too. I mean, this is going to be like a historically <laughs> bad loss for the liberals. I mean, right now, it's like the, the conservatives are supposed to get, I think, 206 or 210 seats in the next election. If, well, what if it's, there's a, you know, they outperform by 10% and they get 225 or 230 seats. But you only need 170 for a majority, right? So if you get <laughs> closer to 250, then you are closer to 200. I mean, that's just, that's a historic loss for the liberals. In fact, they would probably not even come in second place because these conservative ridings are not coming from, or it's not like the conservatives are flipping you know, a lot of green ridings, not that there are a lot of green ridings or NDP ridings. They're taking away from the liberals. The liberals are done. And the ones that aren't going over, over to the conservatives, they're staying home. They're not voting. Right? I mean, you had here, you know, 14,000 votes for the Liberals, uh, or about 15,000 for the Liberals, and then 15.5 for the uh, Conservatives. There are 84,934 registered electors, and 43% of them came out. Now, I don't know if that's historically bad, a low or bad turnout, but let's be honest. If a 1,000 Liberals show up, they win. There were just enough Liberals to say, you know what, I don't care. Not voting for conservative, but I just won't vote for anyone who's backed by Justin Trudeau. 
Now, for those of you who are wondering what was taken so long, as I think a lot of us who were following this was uh, were thinking last night, look at this. Look at this. This isn't just a list of, you know, the first few people who voted. This is a list of the candidates. 84 candidates. The, the ballot was like a meter long. And that's why it, take, it took so long for people to count it because you had to go through these scrolls worth of, they look like like those like those scrolls that you see. They were long, and there's so many different candidates. And I mean, look at this. I mean, look at all these random votes. Like, like what are you just getting your family members to come out and vote? No affiliation, no affiliation party. Independent, independent, independent. The marijuana party. Like, get look at this. The Marxist Leninist party got fifty seven votes. Marxist Leninist. Guys, like, don't, didn't you know we already have a party like that? They're called the, the they're called the Liberal Party. Hey, you want communist wannabes? There you go. Why didn't you just vote Liberal? But my point of bringing this up is, why are there so many candidates that like, you don't need eighty four different people running for a by election? I mean, give me a break. Oh wow, look at this guy, <laughs> Felix Antoine Hamill, the the only person out of all eighty four candidates to get zero votes. I would step out from politics if I were you, and probably most of these other people too. Not sure what the point of that was. I'm not sure why they let the ballot become so unorganized. 84 candidates, even 10 would be a lot, but 84 is just ridiculous. They got to clear that up and not let so many candidates run. I mean, that's crazy. But then if you break it down, I mean, you know, the, the NDPs, 10% of the vote. You'd think if a liberal writing was going to, you know, flip over to another party, it would be the NDP. But again, the NDP, what are they doing? Running around with their stupid, unlikable leader who's holding Canadians hostage, who want a federal election. And he is the only reason we can't have one. So Canadians are very upset with him, too. Not to mention the fact that he would be even worse than Justin Trudeau, but that's a, another topic for another video. But I just wanted to report on this. I was so shocked when I saw this. Like, I was happy that the Conservative kept it close because that's a win in itself, right? If it's a liberal stronghold, you got killed in the last election, you made up about 20 points. That's great. They just, they took it right from the liberals. A liberal stronghold, folks, has just went conservative. What's the rest of the country going to do? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow this channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with another video.